Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft, right? Bill Gates built the biggest company in the world, Microsoft. And he made a lot of money for himself. $70 billion. How do you make $70 billion? Anybody know? How do you make $70 billion? Well, you create how much you value? More than that. Yeah, you have to. Take, the only way to make seventy billion dollars for yourself is to create trillions of dollars of value out there. Bill Gates changed the world. Hundreds of millions of people all over this planet are better off because of Microsoft. That's why he could get seven billion, seventy billion. But the only way to make a billion is to sell your product to hundreds of millions of people. Why would they buy your product? Because it's going to make their life better. We've established that, right? So the only way to become a billion is to make the world a better place. To improve the lives of hundreds of millions or billions of people. So Bill Gates did that. So he should be like the greatest humanitarian in all of history. He made the world a better place for billions of people when he was at Microsoft. I mean, he helped more people than Mother Teresa. Much more people than Mother Teresa. Not on the same scale. <clears throat> Yet, is he moral? Is he noble? Is he good and virtuous? No. Well, we'll get to him giving his money away. We'll get to that <laughs> phenomenon. I'm just talking about making the money. Is he noble and good? And uh, are we going to make him a saint? Because he helped make the world a better place. Why won't we make him a saint? Because he dared to make $70 billion in the process. If you help yourself by helping other people, it doesn't count. I mean, you guys don't remember, but I remember the 90s when people looked at Bill Gates with you know, they admired him as an entrepreneur, but morally, they thought he was a bad guy because he was making so much money. When did Bill Gates become a good guy? When he left Microsoft, God forbid you actually work and make money. And he started giving it all away. Giving money, that's cool. That's noble. That's good. Now you're a good guy. He's not changing the world much. He's not helping that many people. Nowhere near as many people as he did with Microsoft. But now he's a good guy because at least he's not making anything for himself. God forbid you do that. Now he's still not a saint. We still not building statues for him. Right? Because what, 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 what is required to become a saint? You have to be poor. But it's not just about money being a saint. What else is a saint really about? Saf sacrificing, suffering. You go, if you go to a museum, I don't know if you have, I don't know what kind of museum you have here in Singapore. You should probably go find out. But do you go, do you go, if you've ever been to Europe and you go to Christian museums with a lot of Christian paintings and they have paintings of saints, you ever seen a saint in a painting with a big smile on their face having a good time? <laughs> no, because the whole point of being a saint is to suffer. The whole point of being a saint is that you suffer, helping other people or fighting for God or helping something. But not thinking of yourself, not enjoying life, not being happy, that contradicts morality. So, the point is this, we live with a moral code, all of us live with this moral code. I think Christianity has been unbelievably successful in exporting this moral code to every corner of the world. We live with a moral code that basically says, that self-interest is evil and bad and what's good is giving, sacrificing, being selfless.